All right, in this video, we're going to look at how to set up the motion detection and smart events on your Generation 2 Color View or Generation 2 AccuSense. It's specifically for these two cameras at this stage uh, because they have the new motion detection parameters. Um, and so let's just dive right in. Right, so here we are on the web interface again. You'll notice that I have gone directly to the uh, NVR's IP address. Uh, this can be obtained from your NVR directly by clicking into the network settings and having a look at the IP4 address. So you see that address here uh, is what I've now punched into any web browser. We typically use Google Chrome and um, that helps because it resolves the actual picture through. So when we're setting up um, the image settings, etc., you can actually see the footage from the camera. Some of the uh, web browsers will not enable you to do that. So C Google Chrome, we know, actually does do that and it works on iOS, um, Apple and also Windows. Okay, so once we've gone through to that IP address, we've logged in with our username and password. Uh, we're now going to pop down to the event section here. First one it sets you up in is the basic events. We're going to look at basic and smart events today. Now, it's interesting because here is the uh, old way that motion detection was done. Uh, this is the generation one color view camera and you can see we've got the red blocks uh, which detect the motion uh, for this particular camera. Um, in the Gen 2 color view and AccuSense, those blocks are now gone. Okay, so now we have the ability to totally customize the area that we want to pick up detection in. So the first thing to do uh, when it comes to motion detection is to enable these two squares. It actually turns the feature on in the camera. Uh, the next stage is to draw the area that we want to pick up detection. Now these do have detection targets, you know, human and vehicle, that's part of the generation two upgrade. Uh, but we want to do the camera as much of a favor as we can. It's still an algorithm at the end of the day. So filtering out things like moving trees and um, cars, you know, perhaps that are on the road here, uh, that's probably a good idea. So when we take this uh, example, we're going to draw an area, I've clicked the draw an area, nothing changed, it's as though I didn't press that button, but I did. So you'll see now when I click into the actual picture here, now when I click in here, I get my first little green dot. Okay, so I click draw area, then I move my mouse into the actual image, clicked once, and that started the uh, process of drawing the motion detection area. Now I'm going to go I'm just looking at this car park area, I'm not concerned about the walls, etc. So I'm just literally going to follow that line straight down. I'm going to filter out the road. I'm not interested in that area here. So that has bypassed that area. And I'm just literally following the outline of the car park until I get my final square here. Now, there's a little trick to this this stage, um, you do the left click, you do it only once, then you do a right click, and right click will stop the process of drawing. Okay, it doesn't give you any visual indication that that has happened. So just be aware to do your final dot with your left click. Once you're happy, right click, you'll see it'll go this light green, and the first thing to do is hit save. Now what we're looking for is over here, see here, save, succeeded. That's what we want to see. So that has now given us the detection area. Uh, sensitivity is something you can play around with. I typically set mine up at about uh, 60%. So I'm just gonna drop that down. And in my case, I am interested in humans and also vehicles, because it's a car park. So again, I'm going to hit save on that. Now, as far as an arming schedule is concerned, uh, just have that on all the time. Um, the reason for that uh, is you will see here when I go to linkage method, I don't want to have any, event, uh, any other action triggered other than a recording for motion detection. Okay, we're gonna go to the linkage method uh, for other things, uh, for the smart events, but on motion detection, we wanna limit 
the actual uh, action that the camera does to recording only. And as this camera is on channel 7, channel 7 is the uh, channel that will be recorded. So again, we've got nothing selected down here. I hit save on that and that completes the motion detection part of the video. Now moving along to the smart events, this is where we can start to take things a little bit further. Just be aware that when you are on the NVR, every time you flip to a different section, it's always going to default you back to channel one. Okay, so in this case, it's also a color view. It is the uh, Gen 1 version as mentioned. I want to go down to the Gen 2 color view. The main ones that we're going to set up now are the intrusion and also the line crossing events. You'll notice uh, that it's not enabled at the moment. I haven't got any events coming through. So again, if I want this feature, I'm going to hit enable intrusion detection. I'm going to start by clearing the area. And what we want to do is first of all define the minimum and uh, the maximum minimum size and then draw the area that we want to actually cover. So there's a logical uh, there's logical steps to follow here to make sure you get this done properly. So the maximum size is the maximum size of any particular thing that we want to pick up. You can see I've got a big container here, I get trucks. So yeah, we're going to make that fairly big, almost the same size as the, uh, the full box itself. Um, once I have completed that, we need to set up a minimum size. So I click on minimum size. Now this is going to be just a small box. And I think Height Vision used this to try and filter out, you know, birds, cats, what have you. We want to say it needs to be at least this size. Okay, so moths and what have you are going to be a bit smaller. So should filter all of those out. Um, and the final one, final box, is the area that we want covered. Now again, um, we get the ability to do our drawing here. Okay, so again, I could um, be specific, but the thing to keep in mind is that you only get four points of contact. Okay, so it's probably going to be easier to stop the drawing there draw the area again but what we're going to do is we're just going to extend these dots to give us the maximum amount of coverage just based on having just those four dots okay so that would probably do the trick for me here as far as threshold is concerned that is how long you want the subject to be in the detection area before it creates an alert so right now, anything moving into that area that's larger than the minimum size, uh, smaller than the maximum size would trigger it. We might say, look, we want something to be in the area for two seconds. You know, I know if a car's driving through here or someone's walking through, that's my real targets. It's going to take them at least two seconds to do that. But if a moth got right up close to the camera, it would be bigger than this minimum box. Uh, but good chance it's not going to be in the frame for more than two seconds, so that would filter it out. You know, there's quite a bit of logic here. It's just a matter of thinking this through. You can always adjust it, but these settings I'm giving you now are pretty much how we set up most of our installations. In my case, it's set to human. I also want to have a vehicle. And again, I use that 60% as my standard uh, sensitivity and we hit save. Once we hit save, we're waiting for that. The save succeeded on the bottom right hand corner of your web browser. Next stage is the arming uh, schedule. We've got that set up to be all the time at this stage. You could just have that on at night time depending on what you want to do with your linkage method. Uh, but when we get to linkage method, um, You'll notice here that, uh, again, it's just set up to trigger recording, but because the intrusion detection is more accurate um, in our tests than the motion detection, this is where you could set it up to notify the surveillance center. Okay, so that by ticking that box, you are going to get an alert via your Height Connect app. So in essence, that's what that means. 
Uh, it's going to send through a push notification to inform you when uh, something has uh, occurred, one of these smart events. As I said, you don't do that for motion, uh, only for the smart events. Audible warning is just a little beep on the NVR. It's nothing coming out of the camera, so don't be confused about that. Uh, sending an email, I never normally do that because the push notifications is going to you know, wake your phone up if it's in a sleepy state. I think that's the best way to go. And full screen monitoring is if you are actually viewing the NVR or perhaps you've got maybe four or so cameras on your monitor and what you want it to do is when it picks up something it just flicks to that one camera and it makes it full screen. That is what would happen if you check the full screen monitoring box. So now we've got that one set up, I'm going to hit save. Wait for the little save to appear where it's done that now and we are good to go. Okay, the final smart event that we like to use is the line crossing detection. Uh, because we've stayed within the smart event it hasn't flicked over to another camera. I'm just going to clear this area again and enable line crossing. So again, we want to follow the same rules. We were just working left to right across these uh, boxes here. We've got a max size. Uh, we've got a min size. And the area that we want to detect, as soon as we do that, it puts a line in for us. We can now grab the edges of that line and put it directly across the we want something to move directly across. You want to try and avoid placing these lines near the edges of the image. Uh, it's not as accurate. Uh, you want to try and get it centralized as best you can. If it's not centralized, it may be that you need to change the angle of the camera to make it more centralized. Um, but this is how we typically do it. So we've got a car park. Generally, I don't have a massive big container right in the way. Uh, so someone moving through the car park is generally going to walk or drive through this section here. Now you also have a choice when it comes to these lines on direction. So you can see here A and B with little arrows. I may be only interested in people leaving or perhaps, which would be more relevant in our case, any vehicle that's entering the building. So in this case this van would not be picked up but this van would be. So if you wanted to know each time someone comes into your front door. So for example, your front door is a good example. You're probably not too concerned about everyone going out, but any visitor that's coming towards your front door, you may want to set that up with that directional uh, control in mind. Okay, if you're getting too many alerts, that's something you might want to go in and adjust on your camera settings on line crossing. So I hit save again on that. Get our save succeeded message. Uh, again, arming schedule is on all the time and linkage me method is already set up to be notify surveillance center and trigger a recording. Let's save on that. Okay, there are some different parameters when it comes to using the AccuSense with the live guard feature. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Uh, there will be another video coming out shortly with the AccuSense live guard settings that you're going to want if you have purchased those cameras. Okay, until next time, I'll see you then.